All right, y'all, what's poppin'? It's your boy JP. I'm back with another video. We're gonna be reacting to Jardines de Humaya, where Mexico's most notorious narcos lay to rest. So it's a well-known cemetery where dead drug lords are buried and living ones have graves reserved for when they die. So it's in, it's in the Mexican state of Sinaloa. So I guess that's like where the, um, where the Sinaloa cartel is at. Uh, it says many notorious Mexican drug lords are buried there and some who are still alive have mausoleums built for when they die. That's crazy. So shout out to Gabby out there. If you're watching the video, she was the one that put me onto this and you know, let me know this even exists because I definitely didn't know. So we're going to jump right in it. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn your post notifications on so you know anytime I post a video. Let me know Let me know your thoughts in the comments too. Let's let's check these out, man. I'm, I'm interested. I know this was definitely going on. One. Today's episode is on the famous cemetery where drug lords are buried and living ones have their graves for when they die. It is located in Sinaloa, Mexico. Many notorious Mexican drug kingpins are laid Damn. to rest there, while some alive have their mouths. What the? Yo, this dead ass look like a house, bro. Look, one floor, two floors, and a top floor. Damn. Kingpins are laid to rest there, while some alive have their mausoleums built for when they die. Want to know more about this cemetery that houses drug traffickers' nah. remains? Jardines del Humaya is a private cemetery outside Culiacan City in the Mexican state of Sinaloa. Yo, it was established in 1969 using funds from the wealthiest families in the area. It was a private cemetery for the rich people of Culiacan City, especially its professionals. However, it became a place where the drug traffickers built their graves for their families to mourn. Jardines del Humaya is known as a multi-million dollar cemetery in Sinaloa, Mexico. Over time, Sinaloa, especially Culiacan, became known for its drug-related activities and violence. Yo, I wonder how, how many like bodies do they stack there? Is it only for like that one person, like that one cartel member or like do they, are they putting like the whole family in there? Because that Yo, bro, shit, it look like people could really live in there. It is also the birthplace of the infamous Sinaloa cartel, known as the most notorious narco-trafficking organization in the world. In a bid to flaunt their wealth and secure a befitting place to be buried, after their death, drug traffickers, especially those from the Sinaloa cartel, bought lands of the cemetery and built luxurious mausoleums. Jardines del Humaya Yo. has gained notoriety for its lavish and unique mausoleums built for deceased cartel members. These burial chambers resemble real-life hey. houses and associated luxury enjoyed by these drug lords before their deaths. Yo, bro, the this has a balcony. What? This has a whole balcony. Joined by these drug lords before their deaths, the opulent mausoleums has become the symbol of the narco culture that has spread in recent times. It adds a religious perspective to an underworld that has also inspired music, television shows, movies, and fashion. The cemetery also depicts tales of horror, especially those surrounding those buried there. An example is Hector Luis Palma Salazar's alias El Guero story, an early associate of El Chapo during the 1980s and 1990s. Salazar's wife and kids were murdered by Rafael Enrique Clavel, Damn. a drug trafficker and former Salazar's associate. Salazar's Damn. wife, Guadalupe, had her head severed and sent to Hector in prison. His children, Natalie and Jesus, were drugged and pushed off a bridge near the Colombian border Whoa. and filmed in a video to Salazar in prison. To honor them, Salazar built a small tomb on the edge of Jardines del Humaya Fort. Yo, what did Salazar do did? Did they even deserve that? Because like to play with family, I thought, I thought they tried to like, man, I, at least back in the days, I thought it was like, you know, women and kids, you know, not to be touched. He had to do something crazy. Um, he had them depicted in a painting as angels seated in heaven and hung at a grave. Jardines del Humaya tombs are personalized mansion-like structures looking like parishes or churches on the outside. However, on the Yo! inside, they are... Oh, nah, bro. They're going crazy, bro. I could really... Yo, bro, this got a balcony... This is something I yo I never seen I never seen nothing like that. Is, is there any other countries that do this? Cause I honestly never seen that. They really building homes, bro, as in a cemetery. Like somebody could dead ass live here, bro. This shit got a couch. No, they don't got no furniture in there. 
like with well-furnished living rooms and party rooms. On entering party the cemetery, room? the first rows of graves near the entrance are modest as they belong to professional Sinaloa citizens. These people had nothing to do with the drug trade, but yeah, their affluence like allowed them to be buried in Jardines del Humaya. Many of these burial chambers have different building types with various exterior Yo, decoration it. styles. One mausoleum looks like a chapel with white columns, angels on stained glass windows, and a statue of Jesus Christ standing on the roof. Some resemble small modern apartments with glass doors, stairs leading to a second floor, and living rooms with couches for mourners. During Christmas, some chambers are adorned with Christmas trees. There is a chamber with fort-like towers Yo, and another with roof what? terrace with fans. One chamber is a Taj Mahal copy, complete with air conditioning units and windows what? in the shape of the cross nah, on the side of this replica of Islam's most famous piece of architecture. A chamber which holds the remains of a Sinaloa drug cartel hitman has a bulletproof glass door across that lights up in the dark on top of a dome. There are also surveillance cameras pointing- I'm gonna be honest, yeah, yeah, I couldn't- Listen, nobody could pay me no tape of money to go there at night. Like, it looked all nice and luxurious in the daytime, but I, that's scary as hell, bro. Toward the entrance, inside the chamber, there's a glass case, which holds four small swords. The graves in these chambers are designed in a kitschy Italian Baroque style, or the minimalist variant. Okay, Modern, so like straightforward, with lots of glass and concrete. At night, the lights automatically activate outside several tombs, as well as the alarm systems, to prevent trespassers. Many of these mausoleums are equipped with luxurious furnishings, including Wi-Fi, plasma TVs, nah, parks, and won, living suites. <laughs> Now you wildin' Wi-Fi, bro? Come on, like, now y'all doing too much. <laughs> Yo, this is nuts. Mausoleums are equipped with luxurious furnishings, including Wi-Fi, plasma TVs, parks, and living suites. There are even party rooms, and generally, expensive interior designs in Yo, the burial chambers. Space, there are larger-than-life paintings of the deceased, or not yet deceased, hung inside the mausoleums. These paintings are framed by garlands of flowers and portraits of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Guadalupe, the patron saint of Mexico. In the multi-story buildings, Yo, spiral staircases lead to home like cinemas and marble-fitted kitchens. Some chambers have air conditioning that is activated for 24 hours. The various chambers in the cemetery are built and designed to showcase the lavish life of its occupants. It's also the place for those that survived them to remember how they lived. It's why several intricate designs are added to ensure it represents the occupants some chambers have religious significance to show that the drug lord had a religious status that is upheld even in death. It's also a place where the drug lords can continue their show of power and competition even after death. As the larger and more expensive mausoleums, the more impactful and powerful its occupant seems. The chambers are constructed for the deceased family. I wonder if like, as far as like, I know it's like a cartel kind of like cemetery, but I, I wonder if it's like, only for the cartel dudes that have some type of rank. Like if you was a somebody, then they kind of like put you in there. But if you was probably like, you know, the soldiers in the bottom, I'm pretty sure they not doing that for everybody. But there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of houses though, or, or whatever you want to call it. Enjoy a good time when they meet and not merely a place to mourn and pray. It's why it has areas where people can cook, sleep, celebrate, and indulge in luxuries. No, Many I'm of the buildings in the cemetery nothing. cost almost half a million dollars. And the ones of the most famous members of the Sinaloa cartel are called El Panteón. The mausoleums were constructed to exalt the dead, hence the fortune spent on their creation. The littlest grave in the cemetery is said to cost more than an average home in Culiacán. One of the most famous graves in the Panteón Panteon belongs to Mexican drug kingpin Arturo Beltran Leva, who died in 2009 during a large-scale shootout with the Mexican army. He's known Damn. to have split his cartel from the Sinaloa clan after he assumed the cartel betrayed his brother by giving him up to the authorities. Arturo Beltran Leva was known by the nickname El Jefe de Jefes, the boss of oh, the bosses. The boss of he boss. built a mausoleum to be buried in, in the form of a fortress for 650,000 US dollars. Damn. Despite this enormous amount of money That's spent on Arturo's mausoleum, about. the burial chamber is a modest one. Close to Leva's fortress is the more contemporary resting place of Ignacio Nacho Coronel, known as King of the Crystal. He was a top-ranking Sinaloa cartel member who controlled the cocaine trade from Colombia to Mexico to the United States for the organization. According to the British Daily 
mail, Nacho's chamber costs about 450,000 US dollars. The damn. mausoleum has an automatic alarm system that sends videos of any intruders to the smartphones of the other members of the cartel when they try to break what? into his grave. The burial chamber of Inés Calderón, an infamous drug boss and organized crime figure in the 1970s and 1980s, costs about 550,000 US dollars. It's well furnished with luxurious decorations and has an extravagant dome, which is guarded by security personnel. El Chapo, the notorious former leader of the Sinaloa cartel, extradited to the United States, no, also built a burial chamber for himself and his four brothers in the cemetery. The mausoleum complex is said to cost about 1.2 million US dollars. It is known as the most expensive chamber in the burial site. El Chapo is the only one who is still alive. If, the that's, if that, those are his, they don't really look, you know, that luxurious. He got four of for him and his and his brothers. That's crazy. That's tough though. Known as the most expensive chamber in the burial site, El Chapo is the only one who is still alive of the five Guzman brothers, oh, five brothers. and will be buried in the last free grave once he's dead. Presently, the infamous narco trafficker is still living and serving a life sentence in a maximum security prison in New York. Notable burials at Jardines de Humaya, Jose Rodrigo Arechiga Gamboa, 1980 to 2020, drug lord, Marcos Arturo Beltran Leva, 1967 to 2009, drug lord, Ines El Ingeniero Calderon Quintero, 1954 to 1988, organized crime figure, Amado Carillo Fuentes, 1954 to 1997, drug lord Manuel Cloutier 1934 to 1989 politician Ignacio Coronel Villarreal 1954 to 2010 drug lord Manuel Torres Felix Cali. 1958 to 2012 drug lord what are your thoughts on Jardines del Humaya share your thoughts in the comment section below bye y'all yeah, this is the end of the video right here it's crazy honestly I'm speechless. I don't even know what to even think about this. I've never even seen nothing like this before. Like cemeteries, you know, they look like the typical cemetery. I mean, the ones that I've seen is like the typical cemetery that, you know, like normal people go into. I, I want to know in the comments, are they the, like, you know, Mexico is the only one that has this? Because I honestly, I don't know, bro. I've never really seen nothing like this. But it, it's crazy. Them, them, you could really, you could really live in these. They look like apartments to me. I don't even know how you can even call this like a cemetery. This is, this is crazy, y'all. But yeah, y'all let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Uh, turn your post notifications on so you know anytime I post a, I said piss, post a video and I'm off this. Oh!